Happy holidays, everybody. I just wanted to say welcome back to my studio. And today we're gonna to be painting some holiday cards. And these cards um, that I painted are just simple shapes. So if you don't have strong drawing skills or you're new to watercolor, um, these are the perfect cards to paint because you can change each one of them up and make them completely different. But it's the same theme across the board. So today I will show you how to paint this one. And we'll be using this color palette. And you can see all the embellishments that I've done in a gold watercolor. And then I'll also paint this one, but this will be a sped up version. This also has a little bit of metallic gold at the top, if you can see that. So uh, my dog is in my studio. Her name is Maisie. And um, so if you're ever watching my tutorials and you hear some like weird sounds in the background, like scrunching or crunching and squeaking and that's her so um let's go over the supply list everything that you'll need and let's start painting okay so for the supply list um you're gonna need first and foremost paper and you can use just regular watercolor paper and cut it to whatever size you need score it and then fold it in half and there you have your card but i had these sitting on my shelf for quite some time um strathmore watercolor cards and i like these because they come with envelopes so super easy um i'm not sure if this is a super let's see this is 140 pound um, and these are really nice it's cold press paper and we're not doing really super wet on wet kind of stuff with these cards. So if you have a lighter weight card, that should be okay. And then we've got brushes. I um, My go-to brushes are these silver black velvet. Uh, and then I just recently bought these Princeton um, Summit brushes for doing detail work. And these are synthetic and they have a lot of spring to them, which I really like. So you'll need some brushes. They do not have to be these. Use whatever you've got. And then I have this Kremer um, gold paint. And um, I will leave a link for this in the description. You can use gel pens. I have an assortment of gel pens. I have a ton of gel pens, actually. Um, so they come in all sorts of different metallics, glitter. I have white. This is the blue that I used for the writing. And these are just Jelly Roll brand. Um, so I used this blue because it was the closest match that I had. Or you can paint it on, You can, which is a little more difficult to paint on lettering, but it can be done. So um, gel pens for embellishing any sort of metallic watercolor. You do not have to use this Kremer pigment, pigment at all. Just um, most craft stores have metallic palettes available now. And you'll also need some sort of masking tape. Now, this is actually artist tape. Um, if you don't have artist tape, you can use washi tape. I'm not a huge fan of washi tape. I, I think that it's not sticky enough. Um, and I never have good results, really. Uh, I usually get bleeds under my washi tape. So I have been steering away from this um, and using my artist tape. And you can use regular masking tape, regular painter's tape. Just apply the um, tape to your clothes first, and that will kind of lower the tack on the tape so that you don't damage your paper. And what else? You need a ruler and some watercolor paint. Use whatever watercolor paint that you have on hand. Um, this is my messy palette. This is all Daniel Smith paint. Um, but you can use any brand that you want. So um, that's it. And we're going to get started on painting these cards. I'm starting off by putting down a piece of tape. And this will be the base of our trees. And this will just help us keep a nice clean edge. And then we'll have room to write anything that we want down here at the bottom. So I'm going to start off by creating my grouping of trees. And the only thing that I... Uh, would be mindful of is to try to keep them uh, centered in the middle of your card and the grouping is really up to you however you want to do it but I'm gonna start with I'm gonna just start by grabbing my ruler and I will probably end up speeding this up so you don't have to watch me pencil in all of these lines just make sure that you have trees that are of uh, 
varied heights. You don't want them to be all the same um, because you want this to be interesting. And if you hear any squeaky sounds, that's my dog. She's hanging out in the studio and she's always got her toy nearby. You can also make these varying sizes. They don't all have to be the same. You can make some of them uh, really narrow, tall and skinny, and make some others uh, wider. And I think it's more interesting if you do that. And I also like to do um, an odd, an odd amount of trees, an odd number. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to erase that. <laughs> so um, I just get my kneaded eraser, which I've got laying right here. And if you're wondering what these are, these are little uh, scrubby washcloths that uh, actually my mom crocheted for me. And I thought this looked a lot better than my old scrubby washcloth, which was white and um, pretty beat. But I use it to wipe my paint off. Uh, it saves a ton in paper towels. And um, with it being so colorful, you, you really can't see all the paint on it. So, um, so I'm going to take my kneaded eraser and I'm just going to roll this across because I want to lift off any extra graphite. Because watercolors being transparent, uh, you are going to see the sketch. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just decide on our palette. And in this one, and feel free to use any color palette. You can go with the traditional um, green trees. But I'm going to mix it up a little. And I want to use a, um, a dark blue, teal, kind of a Payne's grayish blue mix. And an orange and a pink and with this palette I don't want I don't want it to be super vibrant I want them to be kind of muted and I think that these unexpected palettes are really pretty for holiday cards and I'll be painting another one too in this tutorial just to show you your options for colors. So I'm mixing up. This is um, Payne's Blue Gray. And this palette that I have sitting here next to me, this is all Daniel Smith paints. And this is a palette that I created just purely based on the colors that I liked. And um, I have a couple of different palettes that I use, but this is probably by far one of my favorites. So I'm going to pre-mix some of these paints up. And I am going to use a little bit of this new gamboge over here, which is a really, really warm yellow. And I'm going to add some of this burnt sienna to it. And I think actually I'm going to go a little bit more towards the orange and I'm going to add some of this Aussie red gold. And then now that I've got this really vibrant um, orange, I'm definitely going to have to mute this. And you can do that by adding its complement. And I think I'm going to go to add a little bit of this um, Payne's blue gray in here. Let's see what we get. We get a brown. Well, I'm not really going for a brown. So, but I do want a really light value for most of these. And I do want it to be a little bit more vibrant than that. So maybe something like that. Um, 
Add a little bit more of that Aussie red gold in there. And a little bit of, the, I've got some Mayan red. I've got a couple of different reds here. I just want to warm this up a little. Okay. And if um, you're testing out palettes, you know, grab a piece of scratch paper. And I always have a pile so I can see what I'm doing. And I've got some of this Payne's Blue Gray. And I think I want to add a little bit of teal to this Payne's Blue Gray. This is like a turquoise or an Amazonite. This is kind of a weird paper. I think that's pretty good. All right, so I'm going to mix up another puddle here. And I'm going to use some opera pink. And I'm going to go back into that Aussie gold. I like to use the same colors um, repeatedly because it's how you unify your palette or unify a painting. And I want this to lean more towards the pink. And I can't have these really muted colors and then this really, you can obviously, but I want them all to be fairly desaturated. So anytime you want to desaturate a color and make it look a little bit more muted, just grab the opposite on the color wheel. So the opposite for this would be a green. Just be sparing with your green. Don't go in with a big blob at first. Just start off with a little bit. And I want that to be a little more pink. Something like that. So we'll use, we'll use this and this one and this one. And that's it. Those are the colors we're going to use. So I'll start by um, taking a sip of coffee. And I think for this first one, I'm going to go ahead and wet this entire tree carefully. And I'm going to do a little wet in wet. And this will be a blue one. And you don't have to go you don't have to go all the way up to the edge, just kind of wet the interior. We can push that paint out to the edge once we get it in there. So I'm going to just start dropping this in. And if you hold your brush perpendicular to the paper like this, you can get, you can get a really uh, nice point and you have a little bit more control as far as Okay, what I was saying before is that you can get better control by holding your brush perpendicular to the page. That way you can get right up to the edge. And I had to actually mute that because my dog started barking. Um, so this color that I'm using, this um, Payne's Blue Gray and this Amazonite um, are granulating colors which leaves this really cool texture. And I'm 
This is a pretty even wash for a wet and wet and my studio is really dry and my paper dries really quick. And I like to I like to work wet and wet. It gives me a little bit of extra time. And it gives you a minute. You can um, play with the colors a little bit. You can I can go in here and add more of this um, teal color in certain spots if I want. And that's already drying up at the top. So I want to get this in over here before this dries. That's pretty good. So rinse out my brush and I'll move on to this one. And I'll give this a minute to dry before we paint the shape that's next to it. And this one, I think I'm going to start with the orange. And I'm mixing a lot of water into my puddle because I want this to be a uh, light value. And this one I'll just paint, um, this will be wet on dry. We're just going to go in and add the wet paint right to the dry paper. And if you're painting this and you accidentally, you know, you get some water blooms, um, that's really no big deal. This is a holiday card. And I think all of those little effects and textures that are in the tree, I think those just really add to it. So um, this is supposed to be fun anyway. So this is kind of a good opportunity to play. And if you want to, you can always grab some of your other color and feel free to drop that in. And this will also help um, unify these colors too. You can already see how that is drying up there. So I'm just going to wash my brush off, make it damp, and I'm going to spread this out a little bit up here. And then I'm going to go back into my orange and drop it in. Now these colors are opposite each other on the color wheel, so I'm just dropping that um in i don't i don't want to blend it because if i do it'll get muddy looking and i'm gonna wipe up this paint off here because knowing me i'll drag my hand through it and smear the whole thing so because we have these shapes here that are butted right up against those i need to dry this before we move on to the next one And I might pick up some of that orange in my brush too as I'm painting this and kind of switch out the colors as I'm painting and then I'll go back in and pick up some of the pink.
I'm trying to keep a nice edge here and I just went over a little bit and so I just quickly blotted it out with a paper towel and you can lift out any puddling that you have use it to your advantage um, if you have any unfinished spaces and you can just kind of push this puddle around until you've got all the areas filled in and then dry your brush off and stick the tip in to kind of soak up excess paint. And if you see, you know, anything like that, just leave it alone until it dries. I can fix that later. But if I go in there now with a wet brush, I'm going to cause a bloom. So now we need to decide what we want to do with this one. And I think that if I make that one blue like this, then it's going to look like I've got bookends. So uh, maybe we can, let's do a wet and wet pink here. And this one I want to be a really, really light value. And I already have a pretty watery puddle going on here. So I'm going to wet this. And then I'm going to add in that really watered down pink. And that last tree in the back here will do blue. And I still have a little bit of color in my brush, and that's no big deal. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to add any more paint to this one. I'm going to use what's in this shape. And this is the really nice thing about watercolor is that even though I'm using, you know, three colors, I can create a variety of trees with only these three colors just by you know, varying the amount of water or um, paint that we're using and how we apply it. So this has to dry. These two have to dry. I'm going to hit them with the blow dryer and then we'll paint that last one. So for that last tree, I'm going to go ahead and do a wet and wet. That's some really dirty water that I just picked up. Okay, I'm going to go back in and pick up this blue. I'm going to add a little bit more of this Payne's blue-gray in here. Um, I'm just amazed at how quickly this is drying. I have a heater going on in here. And it seems like I just laid the water in there and it's already dry. And it really depends on the kind of paper that you're using too, so. Okay, I am going to pick up a little bit of this teal and just drop it in. Super watered down. I 
there, I think that's good. So I'm going to rinse my brush off and dry it off a little bit. And I'm going to go over here and just kind of lift out this area right here where it looks where the paint pooled. And I'm not applying very much pressure at all. It's just um, really lightly kind of lifting this out. And wiping my brush off so I don't get so I'm so I'm not dragging that paint that I'm lifting around. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of extra paint and I'm just gonna drop that right there. And I've got a little gap going on over here too. I just want to fill that in. Okay, so I'm going to dry this and then we'll come back and we'll start uh, decorating these trees. Okay, so this is dry and what I have here is um, this is a tin, like a used tin that I thought was really cool. So this is where I store my um, all of my metallic paint and these are all one-off paints that I bought from uh, different sellers uh, like on Etsy. Um, most of them are from Etsy. These are all handmade. Uh, this particular one is from Kremer Paints out of New York City, and it's a really, really beautiful, cool gold. And I'll leave the link for this in the description. Um, I have forgotten where I got most of these. So just look around on Etsy. You'll find a lot of great sellers that make these handmade um, paints and some really cool iridescent ones too. So I am actually going to stick with my gold paint and um, for now. And feel free. I, I also have gel pens um, and gel pens work really great. So feel free to use those if you've got some gel pens. And I might use some of the, um, the gel pens depending. So we've got a real small little watercolor brush. And I'm going to spray my paint to get this activated because it takes a few minutes for um, this metallic paint to get going. So starting this off with a couple sprays of water makes life a little bit easier. Now you can embellish these however you'd like. I'm going to start by... Uh, embellishing this one and I'm just gonna start adding some little little crossing um, like strings of something some garland basically on this tree And just know that if you're, if you're using a light colored gold like I am, it's obviously going to show up better on a darker surface. You've got more contrast. And when I start painting the gold on these lighter trees, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to see. Um, so whatever colors you decide to use is completely up to you. Um,
Okay, so I have finished detailing these out and the metallic is really subtle, but when you turn it in the light, you can definitely see it and adding gold metallic always reads holiday to me. So um, that's why I love this so much. There, now I've got a nice line. You can do that with a ruler as well, or you can leave your tape there. But I think I want to do this. Okay, so I'll let this dry, and then uh, once it's all dry, I can go back in and erase the pencil lines. So before I erase my pencil lines, I'm going to go in and dip the back end of my brush into this gold paint, and I'm going to add a few little dots around the card. Okay, I think that's pretty much done. And I've got another one over here. And I want to show you one more, except I'm not going to go through this entire thing again. I'm going to show you the painting process, and I'll probably just speed that up. But I wanted to show you what a different color palette and um, what a difference it can make in just the overall look of the card. Okay, so that wraps up that one. You can see what I did here. I just uh, used one color. This was um, an Indian Throne Blue, 
and I painted all of the trees with the same color and I just painted them in different ways. So I did like a gradient here. Uh, this was a really dark pigmented, not a lot of water. Uh, this is just a medium value and you can see I left that big bloom that I, um, that I had in there. It gives it some really nice texture. This was a wet, wet and wet. I just wet this tree and dropped in some blue. This one I left white on, on purpose, obviously. This was the only tree that was really uh, closed in by other trees. So I knew that I could let the shape of these trees kind of um, dictate, you know, that this was white. And then we added in some details here. And this one, um, I just painted in a light value and went over top with all of this with my um, bleed proof white and added some embellishments. I used some gold watercolor also. Um, and I added just uh, minimal gold on the trees, added some up here, and then added in my wording. And you can get some really different looks using the same, just the same technique. So experiment with uh, your trees and all of your different palettes and the embellishments that you uh, use and have a good time and also have a wonderful holiday season. Thanks so much for being here. I'll talk to you next time.